Over the years, I've made a variety of unique salt and pepper shakers. I'm going to show you how I constructed two different styles here, and then at the end of this video, I'll show you a series of different salt and pepper shakers that I've made. My first example are two salt and pepper shakers out of bamboo. Obviously bamboo is quite hollow inside, but I'm not using the cavity. I use a couple of small plastic filler pieces, but the bamboo is sealed off on the top. I used maple on one and a mahogany on the other, indicating the different salt and the pepper because of the color. pepper for the dark and salt for the light. These two sets of salt and pepper shakers are made with plastic insets and a stainless steel top. And the good thing about that is, you know, salt will corrode. Well, it won't happen with this. The next salt and pepper shakers that I'm going to display were made from maple burl. This was a solid maple burl that I cut into three sections. And I am going to use that for something else, but I have these two sections here that I'm going to use for salt and pepper shakers. So I'm at the drill press to get ready to start drilling the hole, but I realized that because of these irregular shapes, I'm going to need to drill a hole. I'll probably drill it here, but I also have to make sure that it doesn't go too deep. But it needs to be, I guess, flanged out. So I'm thinking about starting with this, and this is inch and an eighth, I think. This is inch and a quarter. That's probably too big. I wish I had an inch and an eighth. Maybe this one. But if I start with that, it'll open up a space big enough so you can get your hand in there without whacking the side that isn't cut to take the top off. Or I could leave the plastic thing sticking up out of here, which I may do, so you can um, get at this top to unscrew it. Otherwise, if it was so tight, you'd never be able to do it. You'd be running into these edges here. and Well, that may not feel so good. So I decided to go with inch and a quarter to open up the space. need to smooth those over with the Dremel tool, but that's, I can do that later. So now this one will seat very nicely in that same hole, or if I waited and did it later, it just wouldn't work because there wouldn't be any place for it to grab.
So here you can see that I don't have a Forstner bit big enough to make these holes, so I've been sanding them out with a Dremel like this. And this wood is relatively soft. So uh, that's obviously not good enough, but the top, this is good. So I have to sand down more inside. Uh, I think that's the full depth, which well, let's see. Kind of there. Like I can't go any further. So yeah, that's gonna stick up. But but what I want to do is knock down some of these. But I'm gonna turn the drum away down. Just want to soften some of these edges because they're sharp. I don't want to take down the, the contours, but I want to soften them and also soften here on that sharp edge. And here, if I go over this lightly with the sander, it's sort of it, and this uh, bark here, it kind of brings up some different colors by digging away at that outside edge and adds to the contrast and, and the interest. It's good, I like it. I'm leaving the bottom flat. Now let's see if this will fit in there, taking that off. Oh yeah. That's that. So this one's sticking up also. But I probably didn't need to cut that edge, but you never know. So... That needs to be sanded a little bit more. Just to finish it a tad. This one too. I was trying to find ways to reduce the fatigue in my hands. I have trigger finger in this finger and this finger. I've already had carpal tunnel surgery on this hand. I need it on this hand. I've had trigger finger surgery on this hand already. It's just, I just gotta be smarter about the way I hold things because it's extremely unlikely I'm gonna stop doing this stuff. I like it. Because of all these little nooks and crannies, I'm going to get in there with a brush. It's a small painter's brush, but I can get in here very easily. I could never do it with a paper towel, plus it would fall apart. It would get caught on all of these little nooks. So after 20 minutes, actually after a little bit longer than that, I found this muslin, because I know that won't fall apart. It won't get hooked on the little notches. 
I'm going to buff this all up. So that's a wax and an oil. So it's really a nice finished coat. Which one should be salt and which one should be pepper? You let me know in the comments. I'm curious to know what you think. So just because I'm putting the pepper one on here doesn't mean I'm saying what it is. What's kind of cool about this is you can see if it's empty or full and if it's pepper or salt. It just sits in there very nicely. And that will dry hard as a rock. I love the bark inclusion and I love what the burl does. Remember when I sanded here and it brought out those colors? That's a nice contrast. So I'm just going to leave that there. That'll sit tight and be good. There are two other salt and pepper shakers I made. These are made from crepe myrtle. And this is the area. It grows this way and it grows all of these little branches off of it. It's a very prolific tree. But I cut it so it was even. There's one and here's the other one. It really doesn't matter salt or pepper. And what people can do if they want is drill these holes bigger to get more salt out of them. I leave them at the same size that they come. But these are cool. Obviously one of a kind. I hope you enjoyed this video. The next few images are examples of other salt and pepper shakers that I've made in the past. If you really liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Or better yet, subscribe and hit the bell button. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching.